Huh? Yeah, I think we're, we're all in. It's just hard to. Yeah, that's fine.
duration or something like that. Um, and then dependence, as Tess said again, childcare, um, or maybe someone immediate family that they need to care for and there's no one else around to do that. And then, as you said, Macaulay bereavement, so um, death in the family or maybe a funeral that needs to be, be attended. And so great, you picked up on quite a few of those, um, which is great. So now, why do we um, do a return to work interview? So is there any reason that you think we would do an interview with an employee after they've been off for any of the reasons um, just highlighted there? Um, look, I suppose we just need to like track it because don't know if it's going to be a kind of repeat occurrence or try to get to the root cause of what the issue was. Yeah, yeah, great, fantastic. So like again, there's a number of different reasons why we do, do track absences. Um, so like you said, to gain a better insight into why they're off, um, we like to kind of dig a bit deeper and um, maybe there is something going on behind the scenes that they you know don't feel comfortable mentioning to us and um, so that could be a reason um, another reason identifying solutions for the absence so maybe someone's off um, or constantly in medical appointments because they've got a bad back or hand um, so that could lead to us kind of finding solutions um, to that so maybe if we put an adjustment in place it would stop them being off um, as often. Monitoring absences again as you said and spot trends um, so you know if someone's off on the school holidays constantly or on a Friday or a Monday maybe they just fancy a long weekend um, and then if that's reoccurring that's something that we just need to look into then. Um, and again just to ensure this the staff member is fit for work and um, a lot of people will come back when they're not quite ready to do so and it's our job to you know have a duty of care for these staff and make sure that they are kind of fit and healthy to be back in work so that's you know a number of things there um, that we would do and again we also want to keep the staff informed of anything that's happened in the business so as you two have recently been promoted um, you know, staff members need to know of that and they need to know we're going to be their new team leader if they have been off for a couple of weeks and they haven't heard the news. So it's also to kind of update them on any news, anything that's happening in the workplace. Sorry to interrupt, uh, can I use the toilet really quick? Yeah, sure, oh, no problem you. at all. No problem. So have you had a busy day? In marketing today? Always busy, busy, but emails yeah. never seem to stop, do they? So I was just thinking, with this, do our, so our employees report directly to us and then we have to liaise with HR or how does it, how will it work? Yeah, so I'm just going to run through that um, okay. later on, but yeah, they will report directly to you because you're now, now the team lead, so you will be, you know, taking control of this whole kind of recording and land managing process. Okay. Um, obviously, we're here for your support, so if you have any questions, you can always kind of refer to us and we'd be more than happy to come down and help you. That's no problem. Great, are all, all ready to, to get back into it? Yep, thank you. Fantastic. So, what do we ask in a return to work interview? Any ideas of what we may ask without looking down too much? Just like sort of general questions, how is the general health to see if they're. Uh... They're okay in general, is yeah, it? Yeah, that's right, Macaulay, very good. Yeah. Any other? We're just trying to see what the particular issue was, if there's anything that the company overall could do to support them. Yeah, perfect, great. So some questions that we may ask is, how do you feel now? So we can, you know, kind of get some more information. We want to build that rapport with the staff, but so they will open up to us and kind of tell us um, everything that we need to know going forward. Do you feel well enough to be back in work? Did you see a doctor? And that's a, a really important one. Um, if they have seen a doctor, we need to dig deeper and find out if they're on any medication. Um, if they are on medication, you know, when they're driving heavy machinery, some medications don't allow you to do that. So we really need to be inquisitive and, and find out a bit more on that. Um, did anything at work contribute to the accident, uh, to the absence? Um, again, maybe someone's not getting on with their teammates, that's why they're calling in sick. Um, or maybe they have generally fallen in work and hurt themselves and we need to know about that to kind of record everything and make sure that it doesn't happen again to any other staff. Um, is there anything that we can do to help in the workplace to make them feel more comfortable? So a big list of questions that you may ask. Now there is in your pack a return to work form, looks like this. Okay. So every time a staff member is off work, 
we will do a return to work. Now this is really important that we d document every single time someone's been off, mm -hmm. even if they're off for two days, back in for a day, off for another three days, we must document everything. And um, so we've got kind of everything to hand and we can you know, analyze that and see why they're, they're off so often. And um, so yeah, this is what the return to work looks like. You'll find this saved to your desktop as you log in. Um, so you can print, I tend to kind of print a few out and just keep them to hand or you can mm -hmm. just print them out as and when you need them. So just for clarity, if they're off for two days and back in work uh, for one day, then they do one of these. And then if they're off for a further couple of days, they do another one when they come back. Again. That's right. Yeah, so every single absence they would have to do a return to work right. form. And then this has to be done, I'm just thinking, on sort of if they're on sort of different shifts, when the managers and that particular employer are both on the same shift. So it would be the first shift that they're working day. Yeah. yeah, so there'd be a team leader to cover. Maybe if it, you know, they were off during your shift yeah. and you're not on the next shift with them. It does need to be done on the next shift, but you know, you do your handovers, um, which would be some more training that we go through um, with other team leaders so they'll know that this would need to be done with that particular employee. But yeah, we need to do it on the first day back because if it is something to do with work, we need to know, sure. know about that straight away. Okay. So we briefly run through the form then. So obviously on the top you've got your basics, you've got your name, your department, so Tess would be marketing, Macaulay um, you'd be um, manufacturing on the shop floor. Um, so their name, the department, and then date of absence. Now this is really important because we need to know, like I said, if it is a Friday every week or you know if you document that wrong we're not going to pick up that trend. Mm -hmm. So really important that we get the first date and the last date and the date that they return to work on total number of working days absent. So make sure that's filled out accurately. And then these are some questions that we will um, you know, know ourselves or we can ask um, the person in question if it, you're a team lead on the other shift you weren't there when they were um, off work. So did you contact the company at the commencement of your absence? So did they call in on that day at the start of the day? It's, it's not really um, great if they're calling in at five o'clock and their shift ends at five because we've been wondering all day where they are, unless it's an extreme circumstance where they are in hospital or something like that and they can't get hold of you. So did they contact you? You put yes or no and then verified by management. Obviously, if you were in that day test, you would know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can, yeah, so you can double sign that off. Who did you speak to? So if they didn't speak to yourself, find out who they spoke to um, and then you can verify that with that member of staff. Mm -hmm. What time did you contact the company? Um, now this one, they, they don't always know, <laughs> know the time or remember the time, but they may just say morning, afternoon. That's fine, just kind of put that down. And do we say um, that technically before the start of the shift? Yeah, or we like ideally would like yeah. it before the start of the shift, and um, just so we can kind of plan around things. Um, so yeah, ideally before the start, and that's why we asked this question, because if they tell us they contacted us, I don't know, five in the afternoon, and then the shift finished at five, we can let them know, you know, we do really need to be contacting mm -hmm. us before earlier on in the day. So that's the whole reason we ask these questions, so we can get it into more depth then. Reason for absence, as you can make your notes in this box, why they were off. Um, did they properly notify the employer of his or her absence? So most of the time it would be yes, unless it was an authorised absence. Mm -hmm. And then obviously HR would kind of step in and maybe say, oh, you know, you do really need to, to contact. Or if it's not the first time they've done that, we'd look at maybe disciplinaries and things as well then. Did the employee consent to a GP as we've already discussed? Important that we ask questions on this and find out if there is any medication. Um, and down the bottom, you've got explanation boxes then, so you can make any notes um, on that. Did the employee indicate the factors at work may have caused or contributed to this absence? Again, we've touched on that. Really important, we need to avoid it happening again in the workplace. If so, what actions have been taken to support the employees or anything that we've put in place then or we're going to put in place to help them. So that's the return to work form that you'll fill out with all of your employees. Okay. So now I'm going to um, get you to do a nice task for me right. and I'm going to ask one of you to be the interviewer and one to be the interviewee. 
and I'm going to ask you guys to do a return to work interview for me. Alright, you can interview me if you All want right. to. <laughs> <laughs> and can I yeah. pretend to fill in the form as we go? Yeah, you can fill right. it in, yeah, that's absolutely fine. You use your hands, fill it in as you would. It's really great, great to get the practice do in. Do I just answer or do I fill in the form? No, 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 oh, yeah. you answer then I'll fill You answer, form. you've got an easy job. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. And then we, department, uh, yeah, manufacturing. manufacturing. Yeah, yeah. And then first day of their absence for this period of sickness? Uh, Monday. Right, okay. So, um, so the that's... date for that, we'll just say that was the 13th of November. Yeah. Uh, and then the last date, when would you have returned to work? Uh, I returned yesterday, so, ah, uh, today, sorry, so Wednesday. Okay, fine. Wednesday. Wednesday. And then we'll make that the 15th. Yeah. And then, so the return to work is today. Yeah. yeah. So we'll say it was Thursday. So number of days absent is three. Yeah. Did you contact the company on the commencement of your absence? So I presume you rang someone on Monday morning? Yes, I did, yeah. Perfect and brilliant. Who was it you spoke to? Uh, I rang Gary. Fab, okay. Gary. Brilliant. I presume you rang Gary before you were supposed to be in work? Yes, I did. I rang him in the morning. I can't quite remember the time, but I rang him just before my shift. And then Macaulay, please can I ask you, what was the reason for this uh, episode? Uh, I had some severe stomach pains, so uh, yeah. So you some gastro symptoms. Yeah, for that. I did. Uh, brilliant, and you contacted Gary. Did you end up speaking to a, your doctor about this, or uh, just a bit I, of I didn't go and see them, but I, I rang in the, the GP, um, and he said, uh, give me some advice on what to, to do, some specialties, but he didn't give me any medication. Oh, and specialties? Specialties, yeah. Brilliant. Um, and <laughs> do you feel that this was um, an episode of the sickness which was work related? Uh, no, not particularly, no. no. Fine, 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 fine. Brilliant. Okay, keep going. Well, we'll put that on the system. Brilliant, yeah, that was really, really good. Yes. How do you find that? It's good. It's fun. Yeah, yeah, it's good to kind of get the practice in. And the more you do with them, the more you get to know what kind of questions to ask or when you need to ask the mm, questions yeah, totally. um, or if you get one you know you're really struggling with you just give us a call and we can kind of step in and help you out on mm. that then cool. perfect great so that is your return to work form and how you fit it in and complete have you got any questions on that no, no, any questions so far no that's great no great fantastic okay next then um, and the last kind of bit that we'll cover today is the recording side so we know now how to um do a return to work, find out where they've been off, yeah. and now how we kind of record this and oh, put it, it on the system then, okay? Um, so I don't know if you're already aware, you probably haven't used too much of the system at the minute because you've not been team leader level, but we're in the middle of getting um, a new system, so probably a bad, bad time, bad time <laughs> for you guys. Um, so we've got an interim way that we do log absences at the moment. Okay. Um, nice and easy, it's a, it's a basic Excel spreadsheet, um, which I'll show you in just a couple of minutes. So why is it important to accurately record absence? Um, we've already touched on some of these. So the main importance is covering, um, covering people who's off, like key members of staff. It's not so much for you, Tess, I'm sure mm -hmm. the, the marketing department, you know, you can kind Divide of turn over, yeah. divvy, divvy the jobs out. Um, but for you, Macaulay, if you've got a key person that can only drive a forklift and they are off, we really need to kind of get someone else in to cover that and avoid loss for the company then. Um, so the main one um, is, is, is that reason, accurately recorded, um, so we can plan plan what's going to happen next and then it also um, helps to identify patterns again as we've already touched in if they're on school holidays or off on Fridays etc so how to record the absence then so you've filled out your return to work form mm -hmm. so you've got your dates that you need to record so um, all these off three days so you take your form um, you open your absence tracker, which I've actually done a little printout for you guys off, so oh, you okay. can um, visualise, but we are going to see it in real life on the laptop, on the laptop shortly. Perfect. Yep. Great, so you open your absence tra tra tracker, it's just an Excel spreadsheet at the minute, so nice and basic. We give you further training when we do get the new system. So open it up, find the calendar year, so right at the bottom um, here. You oh, see, I see the tabs. Yeah, 21, 22. Obviously, we're nearly in 22 now, so... Um, on to tab 21, find the 
finds the, the candidate's name, so the person who's been off's name. Now, on this is just an example for you, but on the actual sheet, there's going to be a, you know, the, a lot of names of people on different shifts. So a nice, quick, easy way to find them is Control F. Mm -hmm. This will bring up a box for you, and you can just type in the person's name, and it will take you straight, straight to them then. Yeah. Um, again, you can take these away with you, um, so you've got that step-by-step -step guide there. Then check the key and record the absence. So on the side, can you see the key here? Mm -hmm. So we've got the different types of absence. Mm -hmm. And this is what you'd use to record the absence. Each Friday then, what you would do is you'd email the return to work forms from that week mm -hmm. to um, the HR department. Right. We would then track this on our master tracker um, and we're going to have a data project when the new system comes in to transfer all of this information oh, on okay. there so we're not kind of missing out anything while there's a transition of these um, systems then. Okay. And last thing to note, so our absence policy, it is three absences and on the fourth absence we may kind of get HR involved just to kind of see what's going on, especially if them four have occurred in mm -hmm. one year period. Um, on the next year will be fresh, clean slates. But four absences, you know, is something to kind of highlight to us. So if you notice that you're putting in the absences and it is the fourth one, um, please do give us a call and mm -hmm. again we can kind of step in and take things further, have a um, you know, chat with, with the person, see if they are genuinely ill or if not, and we've realised the pattern, we can kind of take things further um, and have a formal chat with them. And then does that work on the like Bradshaw scale? Do you do that? Um, yeah, yeah, so we'll do that on the Bradshaw scale. Okay. Um, again, HR will sort all of that, so that's not something that you will need right. to, to worry about there. Um, just record them. If it hits the fourth one, do not notify us, and we will sort everything for you. Great, so on the laptops in front of you then. Mm -hmm. So if you can use your logins, and you should now see that this... I think it's on the, the front page of your oh, yeah. Yeah. Is it? Cool. You can use your login. Now when you log into your um logins on your computers, you will see now that you will have this absence tracker on there. Mm -hmm. So yeah. if you can kindly open the absence tracker. Yeah. Fantastic. And can you see it as per the sheet there? Does it look very similar. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No problem at all. We leave it logged up for you. Absent tracker, you got it. Okay, let me know when you're all loaded up. Yeah, I'm done. Okay, great. So it looks very similar to the sheet. So what I'm going to ask you to do now, I'm going to ask you to log your own absences. So Macaulay, you um, have had two absences. Um, one was a sickness and one was a bereavement. So if you can... Yeah. One sickness sick. yeah. and one bereavement. Yeah. And Tess, you've had three absences. Mm -hmm. You've had one sick, one dependent and one bereavement. Fab. So if I can ask you to pop your names on the on this sheet mm -hmm. and log your absences for me. Yeah. Just find the candidate's name and log log the reason for and the And then I presume when we send through the or scan through the return to work form, then you can match up the dates for the financial year form. Yeah, yeah. sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Really great, fantastic. So how did you find that um recording access? Nice and easy, straightforward. Yeah, yeah easy, very straightforward, yeah. Yeah. So what what I would 
to say is, as advice, as soon as you've kind of done the return to work, get onto the system, mm -hmm. put it onto the sheets. If you leave it hanging around, you may, may forget to, to put that on there. Yeah. Um, and like I said, it, it's really important that we track these. We need to know if people are off constantly, why you're off, and kind of dig deeper and kind of resolve these issues then. So any questions on the recording side of things? No. No, no, great. And any questions overall today? Anything else you wanted to ask? Well, no, not particularly. Yeah. Yeah. Really easy. Okay, fantastic, great. So as a bit of a summary then, um, so the importance of a return to work interview. Can you give me a, an importance of a return to work interview? Oh, <laughs> monitoring, <laughs> monitoring trends, ensuring it's not a work-related injury or uh, contributing to an episode of sickness. Perfect, thanks, Tess. How we carry the return to work out. Obviously, you've got the return to work form that we run and buy, mm -hmm. and you've done an example of that. Great. Any questions, like I said, come, come back to us. We'll do some more training on it. Um, importance of recording absence. Why is it important that we record the absences actively? So we can see any trends, like Tess just said, mainly, is it? Or obviously to help if there's any way we can help. Yeah, perfect. Fantastic. And then lastly, how to record an absence. What sheet do we use? So return to work form and then we'll pop it on the spreadsheet. On the spreadsheet. And if there's four, then we could hit our call if there's more than four yeah. absences. Yeah. And at the end of the week, what do we do with the return to work form? Feed them over to the HR to system. Great. So that's a summary of what we've learned then. Um, so no more questions on that. And um, you think you're, you're happy to kind of take this on going forward? Yeah, I think yep, it should be. Definitely, yeah. Yeah. Very simple. Great, well that's the end of today's session then guys, well done. Um, like I said, I'm always here, any questions please do ask me. Um, before we leave, I've actually got some feedback forms. So I'll give you one each. You okay. don't have to fill them out right now, um, but if you can do um, in the next kind of couple of hours, either pop them back to my office or email them over to me. It'll be very helpful. You know, we always like to improve our training here and get you guys up to scratch with anything that you need then. Oh, yeah. Perfect, Thank you very fantastic, much. no problem at all. Yes. So you can take all of your handouts with you. Yes. Great. That's great. Yeah, pop those down. And I'll show you out. Perfect. Okay. It's okay. Lovely to see you both and congratulations again. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very see much. you soon. Bye bye. bye.